Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Liang Yan. I'm a software engineer from SUSE virtualization team. Uh, welcome to my session. Uh, today, I'm going to give a topic about Accelerate Your AI Cloud with the SUSE Linux distro from a virtualization perspective. And uh, yes, I'm going to give you some background of cloud AI and hardware accelerator. Then focus on those three uh, typical hardware accelerator, GPU, FPGA, AI chips, and their virtualization. Then we will see some conclusions, some social status and effort there uh, comes into the QA. I hope I could answer some of your questions here. Um, before start, I'll give you a quick introduction about myself. So I'm Liang Yan. Uh, I work on virtualization area for almost eight years now. Uh, mostly work on the IO virtualization part. Now GP virtualization, earlier network, DBDK. Uh, before that, I also worked on some memory virtualization, EPT uh, optimization stuff. And I also work on KVM on different architecture like uh, ARM64 and S390X and uh, KVM maintainer inside the SUSE. Uh, I work at home for three years now. So I know recently people are work at home because of the virus. And uh, if you still enjoy this work mode after that, maybe you can consider come to SUSE. But of course, that's kidding. Uh, I live at uh, Louisville, Louisville, Kentucky, uh, US, United States, America. And in case you haven't heard of it, uh, it's the birthplace of uh, Abraham Lincoln. In case you still haven't heard it, uh, maybe think about the Kentucky Fried Chicken, and uh, that's the place. So anyway, let's get into the session today. So background, let's check uh, cloud. Uh, I think a cloud is not as uh, that hard as a few years ago, but I think that's probably it becomes a default option for data center today. like. Uh, you will be using it anyway. And uh, their public cloud, like uh, Amazon AWS, Google Cloud, Microsoft Azure. And uh, I did a, a consultant for a startup a few years ago about uh, whether they should uh, deploy their code into a public cloud or should they set up in a local servers. And uh, it came to a conclusion that if you are going to use for uh, of 54 to 50 nodes here, the real servers there, you may stick to public cloud uh, because for the from the hardware purchase cost and the utility, uh, the internet or the electricity utility, there, there's there are a lot. And uh, even there, you still need to put some people on the admin, administration maintain, that, that's cost. So in this range, it's better to go to public cloud. But if you have more than that, so maybe you need to think about uh, a private cloud, which we are talking about the coming, the coming next, like uh, VMware, then server, OpenStack. Some people may ask, uh, what about if we don't use uh, over three? So in that case, we don't need the cloud at all. And uh, also, in the real industry, a lot of companies actually using hybrid cloud. They put their uh, core uh, uh, process there, business code, and uh, the uh, security sensitive data in their private cloud. But they put uh, most of the uh, customer oriented uh, uh, data or code into the public cloud. And uh, it works uh, pretty good. So now let's see AI. AI is everywhere, everywhere today. AI looks like the cloud yesterday. And we're talking about AI, machine learning, deep learning, and uh, it's in everywhere of our life. And it's in different uh, industry already, like the autonomous vehicle, Tesla, Uber, Wemo. Maybe in the near future, we are ride, we are take a ride on the Nine drive car for real. Also, healthcare. Thinking about the coronavirus recently, 
we saw there's a lot of uh, giant technique companies already use the AI techniques to uh, predict uh, the contagious trend to analyze this uh, genetic stuff for the virus, uh, something about that. And the finance has funding or like the quantum new uh, financing, they also use AI. And uh, as you may remember in the Mars, there are three meltdown for the American stock market. Some people even blame it for programmer. And uh, uh, even the electronic commerce, think about Amazon, they're using AI techniques to, to choose uh, their warehouse location or to decide a best route for delivery, even to recommend a sale for the customers and also some other stuff there, it's everywhere. And uh, the market also proves this. So uh, check the Gartner report, like uh, for the cloud, there's a huge, uh, money marketing outside and there is a uh, remarkable growth and uh, for the AI market uh, it is even bigger even the growth rate is not not that obvious but it's still a, a pretty huge market there and uh, that's people are using it and now uh, come to the AI let's get back to the AI like uh, just said, we are talking about AI, we are talking machine learning, we are talking about uh, uh, deep learning. So what's the difference between, what's the relationship between them? Actually, from the chart you could see, deep learning is a branch of machine learning, which is also a branch of AI. And uh, actually today people are talking AI, mostly they are talking the deep learning. So here, uh, it's more like uh, using neural network as the model and uh, uh, function as a deep structure uh, with multiple layers and uh, it will achieve an algorithm not designed by human. Like uh, it will be based on the data, the more data you're using, the more accurate result you'll get. And also uh, based on different uh, artificial neural network, they're different like the DNA, deep uh, neural network, CN, convolutional neural network, and uh, recurrent uh, neural network models there. They are just different uh, algorithms. Here is a, a picture about how it is implemented. There are multiple layers there, and uh, really like a neural cells there. So many instructions and uh, people actually usually not develop models directly and uh, they're, they're using on the frameworks. There are a lot of frameworks outside today, like TensorFlow, PyTorch. We're not gonna talk about those frameworks here. We're more like uh, uh, folks on the low level, infrastructure level, how they work. Here is their workflow. All those framework, we are, uh, going through uh, intermediate uh, representation la layer, more like the middle level, and then going to a uh, back-end API, finally going into the back-end. That's our folks, that's our source of folks here. Uh, it will have, it will go to different library, like the CUDA OpenCL or some uh, native implementation like TensorFlow. And uh, from those library, it we are going to the different uh, hardware driver, like the GPU or FPGA or AI chips. I choose the TPU here as an example. And uh, yes, so we need an AI cloud, right? Because uh, AI cloud, it's, it's complicated. Like if you have the experience to to do some real AI work, you would uh, find the setup is quite pain painful. There is tons of library dependency you need to figure out. And mostly like in a, if you are using them in a real uh, production environment, you need to integrate it with your already exist systems there. And uh, also it, there will be huge data there, terabyte we are talking here. So we need a good uh, framework or platform to manage all the stuff. That's the 
uh, nature of the cloud, but we still want everything work smoothly and efficiently. Two part smoothly, just as I said, uh, that's what the cloud do. But uh, how make it efficiently? So we need to dig uh, deeper to look at the core part of the deep learning, which is the GEMM, general metric to metric multiplication. That's the most time consuming operation inside a, a, a neural network. And uh, you may see that's not difficult. It's just a couple loop there, some multiplication operation. But uh, think about it this way. There will be millions of layers or parameters on the side. So in that way, CPU gradient function very rare. So we need a, a hardware accelerator that comes to uh, today's topic, like the GPU, NVIDIA, AMD, Intel, and the new stuff, IPGA, field programmer, gate array, and some AI chips today. Uh, so we needed to use this accelerator, and we also needed to use them into the cloud. That's the challenge. Uh, let's see how it works. First, I want to see it's already there. It's already being used in public, like the GPU side or FPGA. There's already public service there uh, as a service, like the Google, Paperspace, Floy Hub, Lambda GPU, AWS, and the GCP, some stuff like that. For FPGA, Amazon, Arli Cloud there, Microsoft, they also use it already. And uh, but for AI chips, they are more used in uh, mobile or as end for inference uh, purpose here. So, but anyway, we are going to all those uh, stuff here step by step and see how it works, what's the difficult, and how you could um, uh, get from SUSE. So, first, GPU utilization. That's actually the main uh, main part, and it's quite stable there. So back to the topic we just said, we want you we want to use AI in the cloud. We want to run it smoothly and uh, efficiently. So in that case, uh, we needed to make it. Uh, uh, in that case, we needed to make it uh, work like uh, in a cloud way. Uh, thinking about a cloud resident, like uh, we need a, it need to support a, a moderator multiplexing capability. For example, we want uh, one device there could uh, function as a function for multiple VMs there, and uh, each VM could still run native drivers there. It means uh, all the users couldn't find the difference. And uh, after all, they could still achieve very good performance. And in order to do that, uh, the whole GPU virtualization needed to focus on these three directions. First, needed to split uh, time slices and uh, needed to uh, splice, split uh, equal time slices for different VMs there, just like how CPU do the process, uh, context, context switch. And the other side needed to equally uh, divide the frame buffer memory, like the video memory for different VMs. And then we need also isolate all those kind of uh, thoughts. We need to make sure each VM, uh, each VGPU identity uh, to each VM. And all the users inside will notice no difference. And uh, in order to make it work for a good performance, we need a better scheduler here. We need a efficient and a robust. And uh, for AMD, it usually uses the uh, pretty fix and uh, it uses a hardware solution. And uh, for Intel or AMD, which use a software way, and uh, it's more flexible. You can decide your different schedule. And uh, this is a 
Also, this is a bottleneck neck for the all process, and this is also our focus. So let's get into the different vendor, like, like how do they implement. Uh, just like I said, uh, NVIDIA and Intel, they're using a software way, the mediated device plus a virtual uh, platform, and then it will provide uh, provide, create, and uh, maintain a uh, virtual GPU, and then pass through this device into a VM. For AMD, it, it actually uses the SRIOV or hardware mechanism there, and then there will be a virtual function, and uh, each work, virtual function will work considered as a virtual GPU, and then pass through the VM. And uh, hardware with AMD has better performance for sure, and uh, it will come to the 90% performance, quite good. And it also uses less code, and uh, which means it will have less security exposure. And uh, for NVIDIA, uh, the software, we, they still did a very good work, like uh, it, you could still achieve 80%. Besides, NVIDIA, they have more hardware uh, series outside, and they have a powerful software ecosystem the, based on the CUDA, which, which makes it uh, the number one for, for this market here. And uh, Intel, Intel, as we know, they don't have a uh, uh, dedicated code. It needed to use their memory with your physical memory. Uh, rumor says uh, they will have the GPU this year, actually. Sorry for the part, but uh, we don't know because of the current situation maybe next year. But we are looking forward to it. And uh, let's see. It it all different vendor have a different implementation, and uh, uh, they also have quite a stable market outside. So, what's current stats for SUSE? How do we support that? And uh, Intel. Like uh, Intel is quite an open source company. All the code is uh, in open source there. So we can see we support it naturally. Like uh, uh, since from if you are using 3.12 SP4 or 3.15, you could uh, just uh, use it. Of course, we don't officially support it because uh, uh, they don't uh, official support. They don't uh, take it as a production yet. So, but you can still use it. And uh, Nvidia, Nvidia vGPU. Uh, I would say uh, we are technical ready, and uh, you can run it. But just for some uh, evaluation version, uh, still you can run all the. Which means you need to download some run file from Nvidia, and then uh, set up did some set up and then just uh, use it based on uh, evaluation code. And uh, also, you could uh, still use it uh, from 3.15 and 3.12 SP5. We are currently working with them for a further partnership. I think in the near future, we could uh, provide official support on it, which means uh, you may just uh, install from uh, a package hub, and then uh, you don't need even don't need to set up some some marks there, and uh, just use use it with our technical support, official support. AMD, AMD, uh, you could also use it, and uh, since we said it it uses the hardware way and uh, very limited uh, source code there, so you could uh, even try it uh, from three twelve SP three. And uh, three fifteen for sure, uh, but uh, they don't uh, put it into. They are not merged into the upstream yet. So you you need to go to a GitHub and uh, download all the stuff and uh, combine a more kernel module and uh, load it manually. But uh, we tested in our uh, environment and it it could work well. So. And uh, even not official support all those uh, GPU virtualization, uh, we could provide uh, 
set up assistant for you guys. So if you want to try, uh, feel free to contact us, like uh, via a bug dealer or send us emails. Uh, besides this part, like uh, this kind of infrastructure, we also have a dedicated, dedicated team working on the AI, AI VM image service, which means uh, this will be a uh, three uh, VM image. It already set up all the five. It already, sorry about that. And uh, it is already uh, uh, include, uh, set up all those kind of uh, framework. You can just uh, use it uh, directly. Also, besides this kind of visual listen, we are also uh, working on the container uh, side. Uh, for our CAT container as a service platform, uh, you can use the CUDA dot CUDA Doctor 2.0 for this kind of uh, uh, acceleration. And uh, for our virtualization team, we're also working on a uh, WGPU for Kata uh, or see the firecracker. We know those kind of micro VM that support the PCI bus, uh, that support the VFIO uh, device there, but things changed for uh, uh, VMM, the Rust VMM project. So we are actually start working on it, try to put a VGPU inside a security container environment. We are seeing. And also, same as the VM image service, we also has a AI container image service. Same, all those kind of framework is set up and you could uh, use it uh, directly. And uh, now that, that's the GPU side. Now let's see the FPGA virtualization. FPGA, I think it's still a pretty new uh, concept for people. It's called uh, the Field Program Gate Array. And normally it's not used for this kind of acceleration purpose. It's uh, for some uh, uh, hardware uh, simulation actually. It's a uh, not like the QEMU software V, it you actually use a hardware V and uh, it could uh, construct uh, the hardware, the device you want to use. But uh, uh, it also has quite a history there. It started at 1985, but things changed a little bit. I think uh, for the virtualization, especially Mm. Here, uh, FPG virtualization, like uh, I think uh, th things started to change for some high end, like uh, especially for this uh, dynamic modules is available, which which means you could uh, there's a parcel re re reconfiguration, which means uh, on this uh, uh, hardware board, you can just uh, program for part of that. It's theme I, thinking about the GPU virtualization there. And uh, it will just uh, took a partial uh, resources there and uh, build a uh, unit for the general computer purpose. And uh, also, and eventually it comes to the new uh, new way, FPGA result per actually micro stuff uh, already used it for their data center. They has this catapult uh, uh, project. It uses the neural network for for their Bing Bing function, Bing search engine there, and uh, they already use like five thousand uh, servers with FPGA, and over fifteen countries. Think about that. Uh, you all have a FPGA result pool. It will covers different country, different. Uh, a server data center and the different servers, even different FG card, different uh, components there. That's that's good, very good. And uh, for SUSE here, we, as, as I just said, it, it's quite new. We are working on the proof of concept here. We start working on Intel FPGA. 
So since it could work for the public cloud, we have confident we could uh, uh, provide it for your pr private cloud uh, in the future. And uh, upstream is also working on that. I think uh, already has this FPG subsystem. The Linux also contribute their FPG accelerator drivers. And uh, so many different vendor, vendors just keep releasing the new productions. There actually there are just two vendors here, Intel and uh, the Linux. So, uh, but this, uh, but uh, they still release new hardware with the high high end uh, production line, and uh, it's it's new, but definitely it's a very good option for some specific uh, customer. Uh, when you want to use it for some uh, private environment. And uh, it even has more performance than GPU, surprisingly. And uh, then it comes to the AI chips. I think uh, you can't even believe how many AI companies outside. There are over hundreds there, from the tech giant uh, to some startups, and uh, all working on this kind of it's suddenly like uh, all they could uh, uh, develop AI chips. And uh, it's more like a software company. Like we develop a software, we develop a pro application. Now we just develop our AI chips there. And uh, I think the design list and the fabulous feature today make it possible. It's like uh, you don't need a manufacturer like uh, Intel to build them. You don't even need a uh, a design company like AMD or ARM to design it. You just focus on the uh, specific use you're using. Like for example, we are back into this AI, deep learning, neural network. So we are talking about that uh, metric uh, multiplication that the co-operation there. You may just focus on this co-operation and uh, design your own algorithm and then implement uh, the different hardware. Then you create your own hardware. But uh, most of these chips used for the inference. It's more like it's a, a new uh, concept for the uh, deep learning, like the training states and inference. Training is like uh, give data and uh, the train the data and give you a model. Inference is more like you already have this model, give you data, you could inference data to the result you want. And uh, it also used for the mobile or ads end. So we may not uh, really use it for the cloud. But uh, hey, if if we could put it there, why not? It's easy. It's always easy to man, uh, to management in in a cloud environment. And uh, the currently, like uh, there are so many. Like I said, there are so many companies could do it. So it's hard, it's very difficult to come to a standard, but uh, upstream is working on it. Recently, uh, they need to just uh, uh, provide their um, platform, their code to the kernel. So we have a hardware accelerated subsystem there. And uh, for the ARM side, most these kind of AI chips, we are, uh, uh, integrated with ARM, like uh, we don't need a, a, design, a new CPU. You can just use the IP from the ARM and then create a new totally processor unite. And uh, it need a general platform. And uh, luckily, we have this kind of ARM neural network here. And uh, also, it still need a long way for the software ecosystem. Not mention AI chips virtualization. But uh, I think that's the trend. Just as the the way GPU virtualization goes, it may not far. And uh, here we working. We are already doing this for you guys now. So even most of the hardware are not public, like the TPU, which is used for Google TensorFlow. And uh, we still keep close with upstream and all those vendors. We try to enable them or we at least we try to test them with our disk tools. We make sure it is compatible with our uh, whole 
library. In case you want to use it, then there will be no dependent issues there. There is this, uh, currently there is kind of a different uh, hardware here. PCIe AI chips. It's like uh, they design all their AI chips into a PCIe card. So it will use the PCIe interface and going through the PCIe bus, it's easier. They, it's easier to manage it and use it. Uh, and even in the virtualization environment, you can just pass through it to the VM. Uh, also, some AI sticks, uh, they may use the uh, USB uh, protocol here. But mostly, our focus is on here, ARM MPU board enablement. Like we know the Jetson Nano board, and uh, WinPro 3, and the Google Edge TPU, and there's also Southern Edge board here. Like this kind of just a hundred dollar, hundred dollar board. But uh, we want you run all those kind of uh, AI framework on it with SUSE uh, Linux distro. And uh, we are working on the proof of concept for virtualization scenario. Like uh, for the PCIe, we can use pass through. For others, like uh, we are, because they are using different paths, we are, we are still working on uh, how to make it uh, work better with virtualization. So this is still a to go project. So, like I said, for all those, now let's take a back, like let, let's think all those kind of hardware acceleration, accelerators, it's more like uh, all those devices is functioned uh, powerful. It's more like uh, uh, independent system here, just like the CPU or memory, the general OS there. It will have its own compiler, its own memory, and its own uh, framework libraries to use it. And uh, the reason we could do it is because the current uh, workload is so heavy, even that uh, computing load is even heavier than the data movement and the hardware latency. For example, outsource, like uh, uh, why people like why company outsource their jobs to other companies? Because uh, even considering the the paper count, the head count, the some uh, security risk and uh, some uh, maintain cost or even shipment cost, it's even cheaper than developed by your own company. But uh, not that's why we're we're using this kind of a hardware accelerator, just not like uh, uh, the outsource. Here it's all fixable. It's all it's easy to control. There are not so many uh, different situations, and uh, you can just use a hardware to implement a software algorithm for your specific user case. And uh, from all this part, we see we all see we also see a new I/O virtualization trade. Uh, I think uh, seem like the Amazon the neutral project. Like uh, they're already working on that. It's more like uh, all the device is like a totally independent uh, component here. And uh, it has the uh, capability to manage it, like to split it, to schedule it, to pass it to the VM. So it has so much powerful. And it could also reassign this kind of workload to the from the virtual memory uh, VM application to the host backend driver, and also it could provide a very fast uh, data plan between the virtualization stake and going to your hardware uh, driver here, just like a free freeway, and uh, just uh, based on this kind of. Uh, uh, standards, this kind of trends, we are trying to uh, uh, enlighten our um, hardware acceleration capability for our Linux distro. Uh, we are trying to work as a best bridge here to connect uh, your 
uh, requirement to the vendor, the hardware vendors. Like uh, we could uh, through our Linux digital, we could uh, e enable new features fast. We could uh, provide official tech support, bug security uh, fix quickly, professionally, and we can also provide a friendly user experience for customers. You can you can forget all those kind of uh, configuration for AI uh, environment, the, the whole uh, stack there. And also we try to embed this kind of uh, back end or framework in our production. We are trying to make it natural, like uh, the normal operating system. And uh, you, could, you could just use it and uh, by our best engine here. And uh, we we are still focused on the bottleneck, like uh, how to provide the best performance. We are focused on the uh, metric multiplication, right? The core operation there. We are also focused on the new advanced I/O virtualization text there. We are uh, introduce it immediately if it's uh, mature from upstream, and then we provide it to you guides. So. I think uh, that that's it. Mm. Uh, I hope you could uh, get some useful information here. And uh, thank you for the time to join it. And uh, just uh, uh, let me know if you have any questions here. Just uh, a special thanks to the Roger Mill here. He gave me a, a great help on the slides here. Give me a very good uh, uh, suggestion. By the way, he's also a very good uh, connector for those kind of uh, AI uh, hardware acceleration. Like if you're interested in this kind of production, he's a good connect.